Ooh. Lieutenant Caffey, you're late. I'm sorry. Are you ready to call for your first witness? Defense calls Corporal Howard. Corporal Howard, have you been previously sworn? Yes, sir. Would you raise your right... Would you state your full name, rank, and current bill for the record, please? Corporal Jeffrey Owen Howard, Marine Barracks, Windward, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Have a seat. Corporal, are you a little bit nervous? No, sir. Would you like a glass of water? No, sir. You sure? Well, if you'd like a glass of water, you want to take a little break, you let us know. Your Honor, the witness has twice stated that he does not want a glass of water. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Colonel, mm, I'm sorry. Commander, you've been called to witness in order to give the court a better insight into the nature of the duty of the Marines at RSC Windward. Well, you see, sir, it's very simple, really. The base is divided into two halves, the divider being Guantanamo Bay. Each half of the base has its own rifle security company. On the left is RSC Leeward, and on the right, Windward. What is the function of the Marines in RSC Windward? To provide ground support in case of the event of enemy engagement and to provide day-to-day -day security on the fence line. How much time do the Marines spend on the fence? One week on, one week off. And when you're on the fence, how much time do you spend on watch? Six hours on, six hours off. Six hours on, six hours off, one week on, one week off. Am I getting this right? Yes, sir. Are the sentries armed? Yes, sir. With? Sir? What are the Marines armed with, Corporal? Weapons. Pea shooter, pocket knife, slingshot, Oh, no, sir. He shoot her pocket knife slingshot. That's very funny, sir. Permission to lead the witness. File leash, if necessary. You're armed with M16 assault rifles and 60 rounds of ammunition. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Commander, what's a code red? Code red is a disciplinary action brought upon a Marine that's fallen out of line. Name some ways a Marine might fall out of line. Being late to a platoon or staff meeting, having their barracks disorder, Disorder? In a disorder? Uh, having their appearance become substandard? Falling back on a run? Have you ever received a code red? Yes, sir. Would you describe it? I dropped my weapon, sir. My palms were sweaty. It was 100 degrees out, sir. I, we were doing seven-man assault drills, and I just dropped my weapon. What happened then? Later that night in my barracks, my squad put a blanket over my head, took turns punching my arm for five minutes and then poured glue on my hand. Okay. And it worked too, because I ain't never dropped my weapon since. Object. All right, I'm sorry, Corporal, we're gonna have to scratch that. What happened after they punched you in the arm and poured glue on your hands? They took me down to post 44 and bought me a beer. So they gave you a code red, and then they bought you a beer. Corporal, were you acquainted, acquainted with Private Santiago? Yes, sir. Did you see her every day? Yes, sir. You participated in drills together? Yes, sir. Your squads were on the fence together? Yes, sir. Was Private Santiago ever late for a staff meeting? Yes, sir. Did she ever let her appearance become substandard? Yes, sir. Did she let, ever let her barracks become disorderly? Yes, sir. Did she ever fall back on a run? Yes, sir, all the time, sir. Did Private Santiago ever, prior to the night of July 6th, receive a code red? No, sir. No? Never? You got a code red because your palms were sweating. Why did Private Santiago, this burden and embarrassment to her unit, why didn't she get a code red? Because Corporal Dawson wouldn't allow it. Corporal Dawson wouldn't allow it. How, I mean Corporal Dawson, was Santiago's squad leader. She wouldn't let anyone touch her. The guys talk tough about Santiago, but when it comes down to it, they won't touch her because they're too afraid of Corporal Dawson. Object, the witness is characterizing. I'll rephrase. Did you ever want to give Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Why didn't you? Because Corporal Dawson would kick my butt. Good enough. Lieutenant Ross is going to ask you some questions now. Corporal Howard, I hold here the Marine Guide and General Information Handbook for New Recruits. Are you familiar with this book? Yes, sir. Have you read it? Yes, sir. Good. Would you turn to the chapter that discusses Code Reds, please? I'm sorry, sir. Just flip to the page in the book that deals with Code Reds. The book doesn't mention Code Reds. I see. We turn then to the Marine Infantry Handbook. Would you be able to show us in here this hung code red and its definition? Well, you see, sir, the code red is a term only used down in Gitmo. Well, we're in luck then. The Marine Corps Guide for Sentry Duty, Nav Base Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. 
I assume we'll be able to find the term code red in its definition in here and then move on. Am I correct? No, sir. No? Corporal Howard, I'm a Marine. Is there no book, no pamphlet, no set of rules or regulations informing me that as a Marine, one of my duties is to perform code reds? No, sir. No book, no pamphlet. No further questions. Corporal, would you turn to the page in this book that says where the enlisted men's mess hall is? I'm sorry, sir, but the book doesn't mention it either. No? You mean to tell the court that you've been stationed at Gitmo for 13 months, and in all that time, you've never had a meal? Oh, no, sir. Three square meals a day. I'm confused. If it's not in this book, how do you know where to go? When it comes to chow time, I guess I just follow the crowd. No further questions. We'll take a five minute break. Don't let you go too far. Can I talk to you alone for a minute? That was nice work back there. That redirect on Howard. Thanks. Look, I don't want Kendrick to have to take the stand. I want this to end now. Yeah, he's a real day at the beach, isn't he? I was up half the night with him. He's bright, articulate, nothing in the closet. And you're gonna make an absolute meal out of him. What are you getting at, Jack? It's exactly what I was wanting to ask you. You're putting on an entertaining defense that's going nowhere. Look, everyone expects you to do whatever it takes, but you still look like you're enjoying it, and you're gonna find yourself practicing law on a weather ship off Bayonne, New Jersey. It's two minutes to the Reverend Kendrick. What can I do for you? Don't put him on. I can't let these guys look like clowns. Stop now. Three years apiece. Four weeks ago, we were talking about six months. Four weeks ago, your clients turned down the six months. Four weeks ago, your clients weren't daily features in the Washington Post, and neither were you. You can tap dance all you want, Danny, but at the end of the day, all you've got is the testimony of two women accused of murder. Yeah, tell me about it. You got bullied into this courtroom. By everyone. By Dawson, by Galloway. Heck, I practically dared you to do it. You got bullied into this courtroom, even though not for one second did you think you could win. You got bullied into this courtroom on the memory of a lawyer who might have stood a chance. You're a lousy softball player, Jack! You girls are going down, and there's nothing I can do about it. Defense calls Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick. Call Lieutenant Kendrick! Lieutenant Kendrick, have you even previously sworn, sir? Yes, I have. Would you state your full name, rank, and current billet for the record? Lieutenant Jonathan James Kendrick, Executive Officer, Rifle Security Company, Wimwood Marine Barracks, Guantanamo Bay. Thank you, sir. You may have a seat. Lieutenant Kendrick, would you say that Santiago was a good Marine? I'd say she was about average. Lieutenant, on the last three proficiency and conduct reports you co-signed on Santiago, you indicated a rating of below average. Yes, Private Santiago was below average. I didn't see any need in trampling on her grave. Well, we appreciate that, but you're under oath now. And unpleasant as it may be, we'd all just as soon hear the truth. I'm aware of my oath. These are the last three proficiency and conduct reports for Dawson. On the first two, you gave her a rating of exceptional. But on this last one, it dated June 9th, she received a rating of below average. Do you recall why she received such a low grade? I'm sure I don't. I have many Marines in my charge, Lieutenant. I write many reports. Do you remember an incident with a Curtis Barnes who'd been found stealing liquor from the officer's club? Yes. Did you report Curtis Barnes to the proper authorities? Lieutenant. I have two books at my bedside table, the Marine Code of Conduct and the King James Bible. The only proper authorities I'm aware of are my commanding officer, Colonel Natalie R. Jessup, and the Lord our God. If you'd like, I can have the court record reflect your lack of acknowledgement of this court as a proper authority. Object argumentative. Sustained. Watch yourself, Counselor. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, did you report Curtis Barnes to your superiors? I remember thinking very highly of Private Barnes, not wanting to see his record tarnished by a formal charge. You preferred to handle it within your unit, didn't you? 
Yes, I did. Lieutenant, do you know what a code red is? Yes, I do. Have you ever ordered a code red? No, I have not. Did you order uh, Dawson and two other men to make sure that Curtis Barnes received no food or drink for a period of five days? That is a distortion of the truth. Private Barnes was placed on barracks restriction. He received water and vitamin supplements, and I assure you that at no point was his health in danger. Would the court like to remind the jury that Lieutenant Kendrick is not a medical expert, doesn't have the first clue as to whether or not Curtis Barnes' health was in any danger or not? The members are cautioned. Lieutenant, wouldn't this form of discipline be considered a code red? Not necessarily. If I called the other 379 Marines from RSC Windward, would they say it was a code red? Your Honor, the witness could not possibly testify as to what 379 other Marines would say. We object to this whole line of argument as irrelevant and unnecessary badgering of the witness. Lieutenant, may I remind you that you are now questioning a Marine officer with a very impeccable service record. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm over your, your objection. Thank you. I'm withdrawing the question, Your Honor. Did Dawson receive a rating of below average on this report because you'd found out she'd been sneaking food to Curtis Barnes? Object. Not so fast. Sit down. Corporal Dawson was found to be below average because she committed a crime. What crime did she commit? Lieutenant, she brought a hungry guy some food. What crime did she commit? She disobeyed an order. And because she did, because she exercised her own set of beliefs, she was punished. Isn't that right? Corporal Dawson disobeyed an order. Yeah, but it wasn't a real order, was it? She wasn't being asked to secure a hill or radio for platoon aid. I mean, surely a Marine of Dawson's obvious skill and intelligence should be able to decide on her own which orders she's going to follow and which orders might be, say, illegal. Can she, Lieutenant? Can Dawson determine on her own which order she's going to follow? No, she cannot. A lesson she learned after the Curtis Barnes incident. Am I right? I would think so. You know so, don't you, Lieutenant? Object. Sustained. I have one final question. If you had ordered Dawson to get I Santiago a code red, told these is it reasonable to think she would have Santiago. disobeyed you again? Lieutenant, don't answer that. You don't have to. I'm through. Lieutenant, did you order the defendants to give Willie Santiago a code red? Lieutenant Kendrick. No, I did not. Waiting outside your office, it's marked private and urgent. What's in it? My x-ray vision failed me today, Danny. Open the thing. Hey, Mrs. Sunshine. Knock it off. Anyone want anything from the kitchen? Uh, yoo-hoo, please. Sam? Yoo-hoo. You want a yoo-hoo? Yeah. Okay. What? Wait, Danny. What's in the envelope? It's from Markinson. To Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel A. Caffey, United States Naval Reserve, Judge Advocates General's Corps. Lieutenant Caffey, I know the following to be true. Colonel Jessup had no intention of transferring Private Santiago off the base. The transfer order you secured was written on the morning of your arrival, six days after Private Santiago's death. There was a flight that left for Andrews Air Force Base seven hours earlier. I have enclosed the two Tower Chief's logs. You will notice that while Colonel Jessup has removed the departure entry from the Guantanamo log, the arrival entry is in the Andrews log. Lieutenant, please don't waste valuable time and resources trying to find me. Save these Marines. Captain Matthew Andrew Markinson, United States Marine Corps. No way. I don't believe this. No way. I'll call DOD and find out if they're missing anything. We're home! Gotta tell Leah. Don't bother. I need you to pull every string you can. FBI, CIA, hire our own guys if you have to. We need Markinson. We have to have him. Why? We've got the letters and the logbook. The letters typed and there's no signature and the logbooks are photocopies. They're not admissible. A Navy orderly was held up at gunpoint by a man posing as a reporter from Baltimore Sun-Times. I'll get the originals. Don't bother. Jessup's fixed the original Ender's logs. I bet money on it. What about Markinson? How hard can it be to find him? The man walked into the Pentagon and stole government documents at gunpoint. And he, we only found out about it when he sent us a note. Jessup can just fix logbooks. Is Dawson ready for tomorrow? Yes. Is she solid? 
Absolutely. Do you think we can find Markinson? Yes. Do you? Yeah. Keep this from Ross for 24 hours. We don't have a discovery obligation. Defense calls PFC Leah Downey. Robert Downey, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear the testimony you give today in front of this general court martial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, sir. Have a seat. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Santiago, I was Wilhelmina's coming commander and I knew your daughter vaguely, which is to say, I knew her name. Very soon the trial of two Marines charged with your daughter's death will be concluded and seven men and two women whom you've never met will try to offer you an explanation as why Wilhelmina is dead. Most likely they'll offer you many explanations. On my part, I've done what I can to bring the truth to light. Not, not in uniform, which I served in for 21 years, but in costumes and in shadows. I was, a, I was a defender, and at this very moment, I'm being pursued by the Naval Investigative Service, the CIA, the FBI, and the military police. I can't possibly do this any longer. I'm sorry to say your daughter's dead for only one reason. I wasn't strong enough. Always Captain Matthew Andrew Markinson, United States Marine Corps. We were taken into custody by the military police and taken to the brig. Private, I have one final question for you. Why did you give Santiago a code red on the night of July 6th? The code red was ordered by my executive officer, Lieutenant Kendrick. Thank you. Lieutenant Ross is going to ask you some questions now. Private, for the day of 6th July, the switch log has you down at post 39 until 1600. Is that correct? I'm sure it is, sir. They keep that log pretty good. How far is it from post 39 back to Windward Barracks? It's a way, sir. It's a hike. About how far by jeep? About 10, 15 minutes, sir. And if it's 10 or 15, have you had to walk it by foot? Uh, it's a good hour by foot, sir. I had to walk it that day, sir. Friday. I was DDL. The pickup private and I, sir, that's what we call the guy who picks us up and drops it off at our bases. Also, because he can get girls in New York City. The pickup private and I were. The pickup. The pickup private blew a flat right at 39. Pull up with no. Blow out with no spare. We, two of us had to double time it back to the barracks. And if it's 10 or 15 minutes by Jeep, it must be a good hour by foot. Am I close? Pickup and I did it in 45 flat, sir. And you say your assault on Santiago was the result of a, an order given at a platoon meeting at 1620 hours? Yes, sir. But you just said you didn't make it back to your barracks until 1645. I'm just wondering how you could have been in a platoon meeting at 1620 when you didn't make it back to the barracks until 1645. Well, you see, sir, there was a flat. Did Lieutenant Kendrick ever tell you to give Santiago a code red? Me? Please, the court, I'd like to request a recess in order to confer with my client. Who told you to give Santiago the code red? Private Downey has rights. Private Downey has been read her rights. Ma'am? Your Honor. The question will be repeated. Who told you to give Santiago a code red? Ma'am? Did Corporal Dawson tell you to do it? Don't look at her, look at me. Sir? Private, answer the lieutenant's question. Yes, lieutenant. I was given an order by my squad leader, Lance Corporal Harry Dawson, United States Marine Corps, and I followed it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, here we go! Here we go! A little run! A little run! I just for fun! I just for fun! A mile one! Mile one! I just for fun! I just for fun! A mile two! Mile two! I just for you! I just for you! A mile three! Mile three! I just for me! I just for me! A mile four! Where do you think he is? As far as Downey was concerned, it was an order from Kendrick. He didn't distinguish between an order from Dawson and an order from Kendrick. So it's implied orders, Danny. 
so sorry. Don't, don't worry about it. Sam and I were just talking about how all we really need to do is get some witnesses on the stand who could talk about implied orders, or maybe we go back to Downey and then we go to Dawson. Well, maybe if we work at it, we can get Dawson charged with kidnapping the Lindbergh baby. Are you drunk? Pretty much, yeah. I'll make a pot of coffee. We've got a long night's work ahead. She's making, making a pot of coffee. She, she wasn't there. She, she wasn't even there. That was an important piece of information, don't you think? It was just a setback. We fix it. We fix it and we get to Markinson. Markinson's dead. He got all dressed up, took a nickel-plated pistol from his holster, fired a bullet into his mouth. He was staying at the Boatway Motor Lodge. It's three blocks from here. Anyways, seeing as we're out of witnesses, I thought I'd drink a little. I still think we can win. Well, maybe you should drink a little. We go to Randolph. Right now. We get a 24-hour continuance. Why would we do that? To subpoena Colonel Jessup. What are you talking about? Listen, for a second. No. Just hear me out. No, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to hear you out. Your, your passion's compelling, Joe, but it's also completely useless. Because Leah Downa needed a trial lawyer today. You walk away from this now, you've sealed their fate. Their fate was sealed the moment Santiago died. You have to call Jessup. I don't have to do squat. Why did you ask for the transfer order? What are you talking In about? In Cuba, why did you ask for the transfer order? Why did you ask nicely? Why does it matter? Why? why? Because I wanted it. Well, you could have gotten it by calling any of a dozen departments in the Pentagon. You didn't want the transfer order. You wanted to see Jessup's reaction when you asked for it. You had an instinct, and it was confirmed by Markinson. Now come on, let's put Jessup on the stand and end this thing. What possible good could come from putting Jessup on the stand? She told Kendrick to order the code red. She did? Well, why didn't you say so? I assume you have proof. No. Wait, I forgot. You were sick the, the day they taught law at law school. You put her on the stand and you get it from her. We get it from her. Yes, no problem. Colonel, isn't it true you forged the transfer order, coerced the doctor, and ordered a code red? Listen, I think we're- uh, Wrong answer. What do we have for the losers, Judge? Well, for the defendant, it's a lifetime at exotic Fort Leavenworth, where every day is Valentine's Day for our beautiful young Marines. And for Lieutenant Caffey? That's right, it's a court martial, yes, Johnny. After falsely accusing a highly decorated Marine officer of conspiracy and perjury, Lieutenant Caffey will have a very prosperous career teaching typewriter maintenance at the Ruko Columbian School for Women. Thank you for playing should we or should we not follow the advice of the galactically stupid. I'm sorry I lost you your set of steak knives. Get out. You want a drink? No. Is your father proud of you? Don't do this to yourself. Is he? Is he very proud of you? Yeah. I bet he is. Bet he bores the neighbors to death. Aunts, uncles, guys he works with. Sam made law review. She's got a big case she's working on. She's, she's making an argument. She's, she's arguing. I think my father would have liked to see me graduate. I think he would have li liked that an awful lot. You know, the man spent half his life defending the Constitution of the United States, and the other half trying to prove that he wasn't a communist. And he died young, and he died tired. I'm very angry about that, Sam. Your father would have been very proud of you yesterday. You should have seen yourself thunder away at Kendrick. It was a sight to see. Your father would have been very proud of you yesterday. What about today? Today you did the best you could. You better go talk to Dawson. I'm gonna miss being in charge of socks and underwear. What? It's just a dumb Socks joke. and underwear. Yeah. Joe, in the file, had an inventory of Santiago's footlocker. Who knew that she wasn't being transferred? Jessup. Right? Kendrick. Who else? Markinson. And Santiago. What? Wilhelmina Santiago knew she wasn't being transferred. Why it took me five weeks to figure this out is beyond me. But given time, I'll figure a way to blame it on you. Let's go. Wait, what are you I talking about? I'll explain in the car. Let's go. No, no, no. Wait a second. 
cover up isn't our case. To win, Jessup has to say that she ordered the code red. And you think you can just get her out to say it? I think she wants to say it. I think she's furious she's got to hide. I think she wants to say that she made a command decision, and that's the end of it. She eats her breakfast 80 yards away from 4,000 Cubans trying to kill her. She's not going to let anyone tell her how to run her units. Least of all, us in our prissy white uniforms. If I can get her to defend herself, if I can just get her to defend herself, she'll say she ordered the code red. You'll need a window. She has no weaknesses. She won't let you near her. She has a weakness. What? She thinks she was right. Let's go. Say, Sam, have you ever heard of the story of Commander Galloway and Lieutenant Colonel Jessup? I believe I have, Danny. It's a story about courage and conviction, is it not? Right you are. What do you want? I want to talk to you about PSC Doodley and, and Wilhelmina Santiago. <clears throat> Downey and Dawson. Downey and Dawson. I don't want to talk to you right now. No, I can't accept that. We braved extraordinary elements to get here. My car broke down halfway up 8th Street. Sam had to walk a quarter of a mile just to get gas. Anyway, the wife and I were thinking about maybe going into court tomorrow, saving our clients' lives, putting a few homicidal maniacs behind bars to boot. We thought you might want to come. What do you say? I can't seem to defend people. I'm sorry you feel that way, Joe. You're my hero. From the very first day you were a lawyer. Live with that. Lieutenant Caffrey, are you ready to call for a witness? I don't suppose it would do any good to make a motion for dismissal at this point. I'm glad that you still have your sense of humor, Lieutenant. Defense calls Colonel Natalie Jessup. Colonel Natalie Jessup is called. Colonel Jessup, have you been previously sworn, ma'am? I have not. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear that the testimony you give today in front of this general court martial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Would you state your full name, rank, and current billet for the record, please, ma'am? Colonel Natalie Jessup, Commanding Officer, Marine Ground Forces, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Thank you, ma'am. You may have a seat. Colonel, when you learned of Santiago's letter to the NIS, you called a meeting with your two senior officers, isn't that right? Yes. The platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, and the base commander, Captain Matthew Markinson. Yes. And at present, Captain Markinson is dead. Object. I'd like to know just what the defense counsel is implying here. I'm implying simply that at present, Captain Markinson is not alive. Surely Colonel Jessup didn't need to be brought all the way up here to confirm that. I just wasn't sure if the witness was aware that two days ago, Captain Markinson took his own life with a 45 caliber pistol. The witness is aware, the court is aware, and now the jury is aware. Thank you for bringing that up to our attention. Move on, Lieutenant. Colonel, at the point of this meeting, you gave an order to Lieutenant Kendrick. I told Kendrick to tell his men to not touch Santiago. And did you also give an order to Captain Markinson? I told Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. Why? I thought that her life might be in danger once the word of the letter got out. Grave danger? Is there another kind? Here's the Santiago, Wilhelmina Santiago's transfer order that you and Captain Marcuson co-signed, ordering that she be transferred out on the 6 a.m. flight. Was the 6 a.m. flight the earliest off the base? The 0600 was the first flight off the base. Early this morning, you flew up to Washington, isn't that right? Yes. I noticed you're wearing your grade A dress uniform for your appearance in court today. As are you, Lieutenant. Did you wear that on the flight up here? Please, the court, is this dialogue relevant to anything? Your Honor, the defense didn't get a chance to depose the witness. We'd ask the court for a little latitude. A very little latitude. Colonel? I wore fatigues on the plane. And you brought your dress uniform with you? Yes. Toothbrush, pair of socks, change of underwear? Your Honor, is the, is the Colonel's underwear really a matter of national security? Get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Colonel? I brought a few change of clothes and some personal items. Thank you. On the night of Dawson and Downey's arrest, Santiago's room was sealed and its contents inventoried. Four camouflage pants, three long sleeve khaki shirts, three short sleeve khaki shirts, three pairs of boots, four pairs of green socks, four pairs of black socks, Your two Honor, belts. Is there a question anyone near in our future? 
I'm wondering why Santiago wasn't packed. Lieutenant, I have to put a stop to this now. Here are the transfer orders for the last 24 hours from your base. After being subpoenaed to Washington, you made three phone calls. I've highlighted those calls in yellow. Do you recognize those numbers? I called Colonel Fitzhugh in Quantico, Virginia to let him know I'd be in town. The second call was to Congressman Richmond of the House Armed Services Committee. And the third call was to my sister Elizabeth. Why'd you make that last call? I thought that she might like to have dinner tonight. Your Honor, I'm gonna have to put a stop Your Honor, this. these are the phone records for July 6th, and these are 14 letters from Santiago written in her nine months requesting, in fact, begging for a transfer off the base. On getting the news that she was finally being transferred, you know how many people she called? Zero. Nobody. Not one call to her parents saying she was finally getting out. Not one call to a friend saying, can you pick me up at the airport? She was asleep in her room at midnight, and according to you, she was getting on a plane in six hours. And everything she owned was folded neatly in her footlocker or hanging neatly in her closet. You left for one day, and you packed a bag and made three phone calls. Santiago was leaving for the rest of her life. And she hadn't packed a thing. And she hadn't called a soul. Can you explain that? The fact is, Santiago wasn't being transferred. Isn't that right? Your Honor, it's obvious that Lieutenant Cappy's purpose here today is to smear a high-ranking officer in the hope that the mere appearance of impropriety will win him points with the jury. It's my recommendation that Lieutenant Cathy be reprimanded for his actions and the witness be released with the court's deepest apologies. Overruled. Your Honor, the objection is noted. Colonel, <laughs> is something funny? <laughs> no, it's not. It's tragic. Do you have an answer to my question? Absolutely. My answer is that I don't have the first clue. Maybe she was an early riser and she liked to pack in the morning. And maybe she didn't have any friends. I'm an educated woman, but I'm afraid I can't speak intelligently about Santiago's travel habits. What I do know is that she was set to leave the base at 0600. Now, are these really the questions I was called here to answer? Phone bills and foot lockers? Please tell me you've got more, Lieutenant. Two Marines are on trial for their lives. Please tell me their lawyer didn't pin their hopes on a phone bill. Do you have any more questions for me, Counselor? Lieutenant Caffey, do you have any more questions? Thanks, Danny. I love Washington. Excuse me, I didn't dismiss you. I beg your pardon? I didn't dismiss you. I'm not through with my examination. Sit down. Colonel. I'm sorry? I want this man to address me as Colonel or Ma'am. I believe I've earned it. The defense shall address the witness as Colonel or Ma'am. I don't know what kind of an outfit you're running here. And the witness shall address this court as your honor or the judge. I'm quite certain that I've earned it. Sit down, Colonel. What would you like to discuss now, my favorite color? Colonel, the 6 a.m. flight. That was the earliest one off the base. Yes. There wasn't another flight that left seven hours earlier and landed at Andrews Air Force Base at 2 a.m.? Lieutenant, I thought we covered this. Your Honor, in a moment, defense will call Airman Cecile O'Malley and Airman Anthony Perez to the stand. Airman O'Malley and Perez worked the ground crew at Andrews in the morning of the 7th. Your Honor, these witnesses were not on the list. Rebuttal witnesses, Your Honor, called specifically to refute testimony offered under direct examination. Oh, another witness. Colonel, a moment ago... Just you... check the tower logs. We'll get to the airmen in a minute. A moment ago, you said that you told Kendrick to tell me not to touch Santiago. That's right. And Kendrick was clear on your order. Crystal. Any chance he ignored the order? Ignored the order. Any chance he just forgot about it? No. When he told his men, any chance they ignored the order? No. When he walked out of your office, any chance he just said, the old lady's wrong. Have you ever served an infantry unit, son? No, ma'am. Ever served in a forward area? No, ma'am. Ever put your life in another man's hand, asked him to put his life in yours? No, ma'am. We follow orders, son. We follow orders of people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. Are we clear? Crystal. Now, I have one more question before I call Airman O'Malley to the stand. 
if you gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, then why would it be necessary to transfer her off the base? I'm sorry, would you repeat that? If you gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, then why would it be necessary? Santiago was being transferred off the base because she was No, but that's not what you said. You said that she was being transferred because she was in grave danger. Yes, that's right. You said danger, I said grave danger. You said, is there yes, any other kind? Yes, I recall what I said. If you'd like, I can have the court reporter I read remember back. what I said. I then why the two orders? Colonel, why would it be necessary? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, ma'am, you made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters into their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So you, she should not have been in any danger, should she have? Colonel? You snotty little punk. Please, the court, I'd like to ask for a recess to discuss with the witness. I'd like an answer to my question, Judge. That makes two of us. If Kendrick ordered his men not to touch Santiago, then why did she need to be transferred? Colonel? Kendrick ordered a code red, didn't he? Because that's what you ordered him to do. Object! Counsel, you're putting the words in here. And when it went bad, you cut those guys loose. Your Honor, you got markets in to sign a phony transfer Your order. Your Honor, this Coerce is the doctor. You doctor Coffee. the long book. I'll ask you for the fourth time. You want answers? I'm entitled to them. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Because the truth is, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls need to be guarded by men with guns. Who's going to do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I've got a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago and curse the Marines. You have that luxury. The luxury of the blind. The luxury of not knowing what I know that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You can't handle it. Because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like code, honor, loyalty. We use these words as a backbone to a life defending something. You use it as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of freedom I provide than questions the manner in which I provide it. I'd rather have you said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't care what you think you're entitled to. You ordered the code red. I did the job you sent me to do. You ordered the code red! You're right, I ordered the code red! Your Honor, I, I suggest we move the members to an entry room and move to immediate Article 39A session. The witness has rights. Jack? I concur. The surgeon will move the witness into an entry room and wait for further instructions. What is this? What is going on? I'm not familiar with 30, Article 39A. I did my job, I'd do it again. Now I'm getting on a plane and going back to my base. Guard the prisoner! What? Colonel Jessup, you have the right to remain silent. Any statement you do make can be used against you in a court martial or other judicial hearing. I'm being hearing. charged of a crime? You have the right to consult with a lawyer before Are you the serious? Whether what? private or... You! I'm gonna spit your head on a slit in your dead skull! You mess with the wrong Marine! Colonel, do you understand these rights that they've just been read you? You people, you don't know how to defend a country. All you did was weaken a nation. Give, a, give yourself a pat on the back, Kathy. All you did was put people in danger tonight. Sweet dreams, son. Don't call me son. I'm an officer and a lawyer in the United States Navy. And you're, and you're under arrest, you cheap hack. The witness is excused. On the charge of murder in the second degree, the members find the defendants not guilty. On the charge of cons to commit murder, the members find the defendants not guilty. On the charge of conduct under the United States Marine, the members find the defendants guilty as charged. The defendants are hereby sentenced by this court to time serving the brick up until this point and are ordered to be dishonorably discharged from the Marine Corps. This court-martial is adjourned. And Harriet, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I know, but it's, 
It's not as bad as it seems. Colonel Jessup said he ordered the code red. Yes, but Colonel Jessup said he ordered the code red. What did we do wrong? We should have stuck up for Lily. We needed to protect her. Raffi, I'm going to take these guys down to personnel for some paperwork. Okay. Harriet. Sir? You don't need to wear a patch on your arm to have honor. Ten Hut! There's an officer on deck! Sir, permission to be dismissed. You're dismissed. And when Cecile O'Malley and Anthony Perez, what are they, shortstop and second base for the Toledo Mudhens? I would never lie to the court, Jack. Aaron O'Malley and Perez worked the ground crew on the morning of the 7th. And they saw the plane land? I never said that. Good job. The people had a case, Jack. Look, I've got to go arrest Kendrick. I'll see you around campus. Tell him I said hi. So how about a celebration? I'm buying. Maybe later. I'm going to go home and talk to my daughter now. I bet she's bilingual by now. So, what's next for you? Staff Sergeant Hector Baines. He was found watching movie on company time. What about you? Me? Oh, you know, the usual. Just annoying people? <laughs> yeah. So how about it? You want to have a drink? I'll hook up with you later. I'm going to get started on Hector Baines. Stand my post for a while. You are like seven of the strangest men I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs>